Stanford University. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to see all of you here. I want to welcome all of you. Uh, my name is Bill Newsom, and I'm the director of the Stanford Neurosciences Institute. And it's just my privilege to be here this afternoon. This is a big day in the life of the Institute. It's the culmination of a lot of work by a lot of people, actually for a lot of years, believe it or not. Um, so I'm pleased to welcome this audience to the inaugural symposium, and also those of you in the Clark Center who are, who are watching and participating by live video feed, uh, welcome to the symposium. So as we meet here for this symposium this afternoon, the field of neuroscience is undergoing a sea change uh, that will fundamentally alter how we study the brain, how we think about our own brains, uh, and how we train our students, the neuroscientists of the future. Powerful new techniques from chemistry and molecular biology all the way up to optics and MR physics and powerful new data analytics are creating possibilities for new experimental measurements and new theoretical insights that were unimaginable literally a decade ago. To me, one of the most salient lessons from this time of profound change over the last decade is that the brain is no longer simply a problem in biology or psychology, if it ever indeed was. As President Obama said in kicking off the National Brain Initiative last year, we need an all hands on deck approach to solving the mysteries of the brain with infusions of new talent from fields as diverse as behavioral economics, all branches of engineering, and education and business as well. This is the fundamental premise behind the establishment of the Stanford Neurosciences Institute. Our primary mission is to catalyze precisely this kind of campus-wide, multidisciplinary attack on fundamental problems in brain science. And Stanford, of course, is exactly the place where this should happen. Our base of excellence in all of the relevant disciplines, combined with our compact campus where ideas and people flow freely between departments and schools and groups, uh, create an ideal environment for the new neuroscience to take root and flourish in the decades ahead of us. The Neurosciences Institute began the process of community building and idea generation last uh, fall, actually, with our uh, succession, our series of fall, small faculty discussions and dinners. We've continued the process with our Big Ideas and Neuroscience program this spring and summer. And the Big Ideas teams are now poised to spring into action with bold new research efforts in the coming months. And the best, of course, is certainly yet to come. We will work with our colleagues everywhere on campus, in the basic sciences, in the engineering sciences, the professional schools, the clinical neuroscience departments, uh, and of course the vital CNC program directed by Carl Dice Roth and Mark Schnitzer. We'll work with all of these colleagues to make Stanford the epicenter for the coming revolution in neuroscience. A new interdisciplinary research facility is being planned and we're currently in the quiet phase of fundraising for that facility. It will house 20 PIs and their research groups, but more importantly than that, it will become a hub for this entire campus-wide network, benefiting the entire community, not just the labs that are housed in that particular building. This new multidisciplinary neuroscience is reflected in the agenda for this symposium. Uh, we have presentations from very prominent researchers in diverse fields, including engineering, law, and mental health public policy, as well as from neuroscientists working at a variety of levels, all the way from the molecular uh, to the whole human brain. We're very grateful to this very distinguished group of speakers, both external guests and our internal speakers as well, who have agreed to participate. I personally have been anticipating the symposium for many months, and I think it will be an intellectual feast over the next 24 hours. Uh, so with that, I'm going to get off of the stage, and I'm going to get on to the uh, meat of the symposium, and, and I'm first going to introduce Dr. Ann Arvin. Ann Arvin is the Lucille Salter Packard Professor of Pediatrics and uh, uh, Microbiology and Immunology at Stanford. She is a virologist who is renowned for her work on molecular pathogenesis of medically important herpes viruses. She has many scientific accolades, as you can read in your brochures, but most important for today's symposium, Anne is the Vice Provost and Dean of Research here at Stanford. And in this role, Anne is in charge of all of Stanford's independent laboratories, including the Stanford Neurosciences Institute, which also happens to mean she's my direct boss. Um, and she's a good one. 
Anne has played a critical role in the formation of SNI, and she is one of our strongest and most enthusiastic advocates at the university level. So please join me in welcoming Ann Arvin. Thank, thank you very much, Bill. It is a terrific uh, day. Um, I certainly recall many hours, um, which many of you participated in, prior to uh, our um, having Bill agreeing to become our center director, as our institute director, I should say, um, as we were trying to pull together the various threads and um, uh, groups of people who are now part of this wonderful new institute. So Bill asked me to give you a little bit of the university perspective on these interdisciplinary institutes of which um, now our Neuroscience Institute is the 18th of these university-wide programs um, that uh, interestingly, um, you may not know, have a very long history at Stanford. So um, you're all experts on the brain and new ideas and where they come from and so forth. We all think, I th believe we think, that we somehow invented this concept of interdisciplinary research. Um, in fact, Stanford has a policy setting up these university-wide institutes that was um, passed by our faculty senate in 1982. And so, uh, whatever we're doing, it's not exactly a brand new idea. What they said at that time is that these institutes would promote interdisciplinary scholarship and research, that sounds familiar, to facilitate faculty research into new areas while offering students a unique opportunity to explore interdisciplinary studies that extend beyond the boundaries of traditional programs, departments, and schools. Also sounds kind of familiar. Um, in any case, I think we can all agree that SNI really fits exactly with this 1982 idea of breaking down the barriers between traditional areas of study, uh, again quoting, to solve complex problems at the intersection of various disciplines, um, and which, are, which is the kind of work that is essential in the search for solutions to significant global and societal problems. That is what we are expecting all of you to do in this um, exciting uh, work um, that lies ahead for SNI. Um, we already see how SNI is going to accomplish this through the big ideas projects that were just announced. Uh, we know from the experience with BioX and the Woods Institute and the other institutes that these kinds of internal awards are really a very effective way to get faculty to take on high-risk projects and to find new colleagues to partner with and eventually very um, much uh, of value towards getting extramural um, research funding. We can document that very well with the BioX program, for example. It's what John Hennessy calls moving the cat food, um, these internal uh, awards. So again, as neuroscientists, you probably know all about how to make the cats go where the food is in any case. Um, so the other thing we also see from these pilot projects already is that um, this uh, institute is going to leverage another major benefit and advantage that we literally inherited beyond this concept of interdisciplinary institutes, and that is the fact that we have seven schools on one campus. So it is really timely to uh, recognize that and take advantage of that um, tremendous strength in the context of um, breaking down barriers to progress in the neurosciences. So we have today's symposium as a perfect example of, of the kind of formal activities where that'll happen. We know that the Institute, through your participation and your involving your trainees, will have many other kinds of ways to facilitate these interactions more informally. Um, Bill always um, promotes the idea of a pub where that's a, a, good, a good way to make that happen. And so we'll see how we can, we can um, uh, build that into the new building, but in the meanwhile, maybe uh, some other venues for that kind of interaction will, uh, will be identified. So finally, let's um, just mention the building. Um, 
this new building, which I think you probably all know is gonna go sort of across from where the Clark Center is, where the um, energy uh, facility is, that's gonna be dismantled, and we will have a beautiful new building. And for those of you who've been helping out with some of the um, discussions with the architect, it's really gonna be stunning. Um, I think uh, also is though, again, an evidence of um, how Stanford has been able to move forward with interdisciplinary research. This is kind of a newer concept. It wasn't something they started doing in 1982, and that is to build buildings like the Clark Center where we have faculty and students from different schools and departments um, up and down um, the corridors, um, well, by, Clark Center doesn't really have corridors, uh, <laughs> up and down the outside walkways um, to encounter each other in their daily uh, work. And so this new building is going to um, uh, go forward in that model um, and continue that what is now going to be, I guess, a new tradition for Stanford. And certainly it is, shall I say, concrete evidence of the university's commitment to neurosciences and what you are all going to accomplish. Thank you. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.